Welcome to my channel. New people, old people, all people, all ketoing people. And today, do you want to learn how to, off the top of your head, just come up with meal ideas? Say you're tootling through the Wegmans and you say, oh damn, I don't have anything to, for tonight for the kids. I don't have anything for myself. What am I going to make? I'm so tired of bacon and eggs. What am I going to do? So, you have a pound of ground beef. Hey, this is on sale. I'm going to buy this because it's like three bucks. Yeah, that's a good idea because money, you know. So, we have a pound of ground beef. What the hell are we going to do with it? Just fry it up in the pan? Just, you know, I mean, who isn't bored with just eating fried hamburger? You, you know, you want something other than that. Take your fried hamburger. You take your hamburger and you think, okay, what can I do with this? It's a little sexier, you know? So I'm walking through Wegmans and bam. Now, I don't have a spiralizer. I, at the beginning of the year, swore off buying any more gadgets, things I got to haul along with me. Because in the end, I want to live out of a backpack. So a spiralizer just isn't going to fit in that. So I go, oh, you know what? What did I used to make all the time that everybody loved, that I loved, that I haven't made in forever? Spaghetti. Spaghetti would be fantastic. I've never tried a spiralized noodle thing, so why not? Today's the day. We got some spiralized, they were $3.77, and this is enough for me and the man. So I've got a pound of ground beef. We're almost there. We've got basically spaghetti sauce. So we're going to turn on, we've got a big old pan. We're going to turn on the stove. So what else do you usually put in spaghetti sauce? You know, mushrooms, which I just happen to have. A big old one with a turd on it that's going to have to be wiped off. So we've got mushrooms and I just happened to buy some more while I was out because I knew I was low. So yeah, mushrooms, fantastic for you. Now, I'm not going to do uh, macros while I'm going along on this, not on this one. So what I'll do is afterwards, I'm going to guesstimate the macros on this. So we're getting a little further along in our journey. We don't want to mark down every damn gram of everything that we eat, we're going to guesstimate. And guesstimation, once you get good at it, you can do it. I'm not saying it's good all the time. I'm just saying you can do it. If you've had a day, if you don't want to count everything, the police will not come and arrest you. Guesstimate. Get your guesstimate on. So I got some, I've got one big brown one, a Bella. But these were on sale for $1.27, so I bought these instead. They're just the little white buttons. And I'm just going to use, since it's only a pound of hamburger, or a pound of ground beef, I'm just going to use a handful. I'm not going to go uh, batshit crazy. So maybe four more. That should be plenty. I don't want it to be uh, mushroom heavy. Next thing we're going to do is I've got some green pepper that I have been cutting off of to make my salads. And I'm going to cut off a section. So I'm going to say that's a quarter of a green pepper. Or ish. Get all the nasty stuff out of it. And mine's been sitting a little while so it's got a dry edge. I just cut the dry edge off. Meh. And then what I'm going to do is, like you would normally do with your um, spaghetti sauce, is I'm going to, I I liked, whenever I made spaghetti sauce, mine was always really chunky. My kids liked it chunky. My husband likes it chunky. He married me when I was chunky. So we need it kind of, I guess you're going to call it rustic if you're one of those people. Leaving it rustic. So the first thing you want to put in are the things that cook the slowest, not fastest. 
I got an old red onion here that I've been digging off of. It's not old, but you know what I mean. So, what we are going to do? I'm not gonna use a huge amount. I'm gonna save it that much. Weight wise, meh, 100 grams. I can do that in my head now. I'm just that good. And then I rustically chop this up into just, you know, whatever, pieces. Now when onion cooks down, it doesn't so much all have to be the same size as some other stuff. So it kind of disappears into the mix. So I don't really care what it looks like. Once it's chopped, I just give it a good rough chop like they do on the TV shows and whatnot. I watch a lot of cooking TV. Um, you know what I got addicted to was that friggin' English baking show. Oh my God, it's on Netflix. Dude, if you can watch that, I mean, if you're OCD like me and you like shit like that, that will suck you in. It, <laughs> it seriously is just addicting. Once you get started on that, you can't stop. I mean, there's only, I think there's only three seasons, but holy crap, I couldn't stop watching it. I was like, shh, shh, be quiet, they're cooking. My husband would come in and ask me a question, and I'd shush him. He'd get pissed. But eventually he got hooked on it too, and he would hear me watching it. Are you watching that without me? <laughs> yes, I am. So I finished all three seasons. I was very sad. I'm hoping that another season comes out because I just I fell in love with that. I'm actually thinking about rewatching it. So, all right. So I put some olive oil in the pan uh, just so that we can put our onion and our green pepper in. We're gonna make this like any traditional Italian sauce. You're gonna do your hard veg first. Now. So I went online and I was looking at a bunch of recipes and I was like, at first I was going to make meatloaf. Ugh, meatloaf. Meh. Nah. Nah. I mean, I was going to sexy it up and kind of add some stuff to it. And then I just bought that cool cheese, that hot cheese. And I thought I can make a tube of it down the center, roll the meat around it, wrap the whole thing in bacon and bake that, right? But honestly, you gotta kind of be in the mood for that, and it just wasn't. And it's a lot of work. Cause you gotta put it in the fridge to cool it down so that it rolls properly. I'd probably have to freeze some of the, I, I like to freeze my um, inner guts so that they're not so leaky when you cut it. So I would've had to freeze some of the cheese and I just didn't wanna do all that. I might do that maybe this week and when my mom gets here, but I'm not gonna do that today. So uh, the, the secondary thing was the spaghetti. So we're just going to get these a little soft. So in order to give it that spaghetti feeling, uh, we are going to use, and I won't be able to find it. Oh, there it is. Italian seasoning to your liking, whatever amount makes you happy inside. Um, Food should make you happy inside. That amount makes me happy. All right. Uh, some pepper, because loves me some pepper. Just on the onions and the peppers and what. I'll probably do a couple more rounds of that. All right. Um, now, I've been watching uh, videos on YouTube about how to make my filming better, how to film yourself better, how to be a better whatever, how to make your videos pop out at people and smack them in the face and make them want to, you know, do things for you and watch all your videos and click on everything. You know, I didn't, I didn't get into this to do that, but okay. Um, I really just want to know how to better present what I'm doing to people so that they don't get bored 
or they don't understand and they get fed up and they stop keto because keto is beautiful and keto is life and I honestly every time I see people now I see fat people or I see somebody drinking a full um, sugar soda I just want to run up to them and smack it out of their hand and hug them because no you should not be drinking that you're killing yourself and you know that was me a hundred years ago. That was me with the Sara Lee pies and the... I mean, I look at that stuff now and I'm like, it looks beautiful. You know, I go, in, like when I'm in Wegmans, they have that whole aisle of like cookies and they're all open to the public. Like it's a cookie thing. Like they're thrust at you and you're just walking past them. And you know what I have to tell myself? Children are touching those cookies. Children that have had their hands down their pants are touching those cookies. They're open to the public. It's a festering nastiness. They're disgusting. Don't touch them. But then I go over to the cases that are across the way that have all the, oh my God, the, the bombs and the, and the um, cannolis and all of that cream-filled wonderness that they keep under glass that nobody can touch. You know, the little fruit torts and you walk past that and you're like, I would murder somebody right now if I could eat that. And I would eat it ugly. I would just put the whole thing in my mouth. But that was another time, you know. I, I try to understand the consequences of those actions now realize that that stuff, it stimulates that stupid part in my brain that can't stop being stimulated, you know? It was the same part in my brain that was stimulated when I was, you know, doing drugs or drinking liquor or, you know, any of the things that we get addicted to that we can't stop, you know, we can't stop for a reason because our brain won't let us. So you got to short circuit that bit in your brain. You got to be stronger, you know, than that white matter. All right. So here's our hamburger. We're just going to drop that baby in there. I would normally crumble it, whatever. Okay. So we're going to just get this browned up. It's not going to have a huge amount of fat in it because the one that was on sale, of course, was 93.7. So, not the best for fat, but it'll do for this purpose. It might actually be better because I'm going to be using red sauce with this. And so... My husband doesn't like a lot of grease on the top of his red sauce. Too greasy. There's some things he doesn't mind the grease on, and there's some things that uh, bother him still. So, um, you know. Yeah. So we've just um, put that in. It's starting to get browned up. The next thing we want to do is cut up our mushrooms, cut them however you want to cut them. You know, um, some people like big chunkies. Uh, I'm going to just do cross cuts on these so that they're not huge, but they're not tiny. So you can find them. Alright. And we'll put a little bit of that in there. So I did that little video at Wegmans today, um, just, that was more for me than for you guys, because after I watched it, I was like, oh my god, I didn't, I moved the camera around too much, you guys can't see what I'm talking about a lot of the time, you know, it's, this is a huge learning curve for me, because I am an old lady, and old dog, new trick kind of thing, so I'm doing the best I can, <laughs> as fast as I can. Um, I love that y'all are so patient with me, and um, I love all the questions. You know, I get more food questions than anything else. Um, 
about cooking and um, I don't want to count my macros. You know, does that mean I can't do this? Hell no, that doesn't mean you can't do this. You know, you're probably smarter than me and you can probably track and you probably don't have OCD like I have. You know, I feel the need to write things down because that's my nature. Some people don't need to do it. Young people, a lot of young people that I follow, like other bloggers and stuff, don't track. They keep, they basically just keep track of stuff in their heads. You know, today, uh, you know, I'm on the move. I'm, I'm going to fast until lunchtime, and then at lunchtime I'm going to have uh, Chipotle or Five Guys or something like that. And see, the good thing about that is you can look that stuff up ahead of time uh, online on their websites and actually figure out what you can eat and what you can't eat there. But those places are really kind of self-explanatory. You stay away from the rice and the beans and, you know, the fruit, fruit, junk on the side. Don't go hog wild with too much meat, too much cheese. I always tell them, tiny bit of sour cream, please, because that dude with the friggin' spatula goes insane. It's, it's like he's, you know, bailing the boat out. And holy crap. One time I made them remake it because dude puts, he probably put 12, 15 ounces of sour cream on my thing, and I was just standing there looking at him like, um, I'm going to need a straw with that. He's like, what? Yeah, make me another friggin' bowl. You know, you, you have to take control of your food even when you're out. So, but if you don't want to track, you know, you still have to be kind of diligent because your carbs can get away from you. And you may not be taking in as much protein as you think you are. And those are really the only two you got to worry about. Because if you're not hungry, don't worry about your fat. Your fat will take care of itself. So, okay, that's pretty much done. I'm going to run over here for a second. I'm going to get my bottle of brows, which I keep in the special section over there. So I got a lovely tomato basil that's got three carbs, one fiber per serving. I'm not going to use this whole bottle. So like I said before, I don't generally use a full bottle when I cook. I usually uh, portion it out and... Um, that works because then I can just get them out of the freezer once they're frozen. So for one serving, which is a half a cup, um, 70 calories, this is a full cup. We still got some red bits in here. I would love to have another camera so that I could just point it down into the food while I'm cooking it for y'all. <laughs> Maybe smell a vision. That'd be cool, right? Smell a vision. All right. That's done. Hey, look at that. All right. So I'm going to pour. We're going to see how wet it's going to get with one cup. Because I'm going to. I might water it down. We'll see how thick it becomes. So that's uh, you know he's gonna want it he's gonna want it wetter than that. So I think we'll do another cup for the old man. And all right, so that's two cups brows, and I still got some left in here to partition out once I'm done. And that should be more than enough. And like I said, I'm going to do the guesstimate on my on the macros for this afterwards that I'll probably post to Keto is Life um, later. But like I said before, you and I are not using the exact same ingredients, so you always need to be aware of your own macros when if, if you are tracking, um, taking somebody else's a uh, word for it can get you in trouble. It, I mean, you know, with your macros. All right, one more thing. So I have some Parmesan, 
And I have a tiny bit of uh, cream cheese left. So I think I'm going to add the cream cheese. It's about three, four ounces. It just makes it a little creamier, a little um, stickier. My family missed spaghetti for the longest time. Spaghetti was one of my signature meals uh, when I was a big girl. Uh, spaghetti, two things I loved in my house when I was fat. Every night was either Mexican or Italian. I could make the meanest Mexican food and I could really whip up some good Italian. Um, I loved me some lasagna. I could make a kick-ass lasagna. So, they've missed it. You know, and every once in a while, and we love um, Latin food, so we eat a lot of Latin food out uh, instead of me making it at home. You know, it's a, I guess you could call it a, tri I hate that word, trigger food, but it can be a trigger food for some people. So this is a half a cup. I'm not using a half a cup of this. I might just put, oh, there's a big old chunk in there. A half of a half, which is a quarter. Yeah, that should be fine. Fine, fine. Good. So a quarter cup of that, and that'll help with the cheesiness. Oh, this is already looking so bubbly and so good. And when he gets home, he's going to be tired and not want to cook. And I usually make him cook during the week for himself because I put all his meals in the freezer. So I'm like, just make something because I don't, I'm, I don't feel like cooking. But lately, he's been very tired. We got him working two different jobs. So that looks friggin' amazing. It smells really good too, and it's nice and thick. See how it's sticky at the bottom? Very nice. So. I'm going to cut it short here. I'm not going to cook these until he gets home because they don't take but a minute in a skillet. So I'm going to skillet those down, pop some of this on, I'll take pictures later, and that is how you make a keto meal out of basically shit you got lying around or something you just pick up at the store and you cobble together once you get home. I know you all can do it. It's not hard. You know, if you're a mom, you are used to doing this probably. So uh, you get better with it over time. I've been doing it for 25 years. So, yeah. All right. Well, that was it. And I will see y'all later. Bye. I can find the button.